Welcome to the week three go-to session. This is the third such session we're, host, uh, we're holding this month. Thanks to all those who are in, te- in attendance. Thanks to all those who are watching after the fact. As I said last week, this session is going to be completely devoted to APA. So, yeah, excitement. <laughs> but I think I also said last week that this might be the most useful lecture for some, because if you have zero familiarity with APA, uh, maybe you've only used MLA in the past, uh, this should be incredibly helpful. Um, I have a blank Microsoft Word document open. If you want to open one as well, that would be incredibly useful. I'll filibuster for a little bit to give time for people to do that, either here live or if you're watching this video after the fact, because I'm going to walk through the steps. Like I'm going to literally create a header, show how to insert page numbers, show how to do the cover page, show how to set up paragraphs, and then later we'll get into, yeah, real-time examples of how to create in-text citations and references. Okay, so if you follow along with the steps in this lecture, you should have no problem. And remember, APA and research, quality of research, will account for 20% of your essay grade. Um, and maybe I should show that real quickly, right? So we're in week three. And week three is pretty much the same as previous weeks. Okay, so you've got a weekly journal, you've got an achieve module to complete. Uh, but the main assignment is this guy here. Okay, so uh, the 3.5. And I'm not going to go over this very much because I think it's self-explanatory. Okay, you can read through the instructions, but basically you're writing the draft of your essay. Okay, this is what we've been working toward with the brainstorming worksheet in week one, now the outline in week two. Let me comment in just a moment on the outline as well. Okay, you have two essay examples to look at. So you have my Jeep essay here. It's a downloadable file. And remember, if you click on the link, here you see a past student's paper on the Diet Coke commercial that we looked at in week one. So yeah, I, I strongly recommend taking a look at the two essays because here's the thing. Every month there are, I don't know, maybe half a dozen, a dozen students who the lecture information is useful, but things don't really completely click until they see examples of what they're working toward. Um, every major writing assignment in this class has completed examples. So for the essay, we have two sample essays. And sometimes just seeing an essay, like look, knowing how the essay uh, feels, uh, how it reads, then things make sense. Like, okay, now finally I get this ad analysis thing. So yeah, if you're confused, look at the two examples, okay? Um, but otherwise, yeah, you can read through the instructions on your own, but it's you're working toward exactly what these two sample essays are doing, okay? Um, the outlines, I apologize to people <laughs> because it took me a long time to get those worksheets graded, longer than I should have. I was grading them over the weekend on Saturday and Sunday. Um, I am pretty good in the sense that if I take extra time to grade something, I give extra days back because I can't get someone's feedback on Saturday or Sunday and insist that they get the next assignment in on Sunday. <laughs> So a lot of people, I told them, if you need until Tuesday, in some cases Wednesday, that's fine. Okay. Uh, remember, the outline is a slimmed down version of what we normally assign, so it shouldn't be that difficult. I've, I've t by the way, I've told several people that I'm a little bit nervous about that slimmed down outline because it seems like it's an all or nothing assignment. Yes, it's very simple in the sense that if you have an, uh, a working thesis that has three clear talking points, and you can convert those three talking points into three clear sentences, topic sentences, to set up your body paragraphs. Um, that should be in perfect shape. And the rest of it is research, right? Finding three pieces of research, uh, citing them, and that's it. But if you screw up any of that, <laughs> I'm worried that I'm worried that the, the the grades will be either like all or nothing. People either ace it or bomb it. So that's going to be interesting. But here's the thing, uh, because it took me so long to grade the worksheets, I really am going to try to grade the outlines quickly because it's such a slimmed down assignment. I'm going to try to resist the temptation to uh, comment on so many sentence level things, you know, marking grammar things or missing commas and just get right into the crux of it. Like, yes, this looks good. Or mm, you've missed, this is way off, okay? This is way off and we need to go back to basics. Thesis, three points. Etc. Um, so I can get through them a lot more quickly. <clears throat> because yeah, I'd like to get back on track in terms of this essay draft being due on Sunday. Um, okay, so let's talk about APA because your essay does have to be in APA format. 
Um, APA format covers three things. First, layout. In other words, how the essay looks. That covers everything from paragraphing to spacing, um, all that kind of stuff. Cover page, how the essay looks. Second is in-text citations. And third is references. So we're going to go over those three things. I have a, make, a blank Microsoft Word document already open. Um, hopefully you have the same. Uh, there is a Microsoft free version of Microsoft Online called Microsoft OneDrive. Oops. Okay, this is a free version. Um, I don't think it doesn't have the full range of like built-in tools. I believe you have the tools available. Probably if you have, go up to the old-fashioned way of doing things, doing things like tools or insert, right? Um, instead of the menu of clickable tools here. Um, so you might have to hunt around if you're using some other sort of word processing program like Pages, which is uh, Apple's version, a Mac, Mac's version of uh, Word. You also will have to find out where the different things are. But I'm going to assume that most of you have access to Microsoft Word. Uh, okay, because that's what I'm using. So the first thing we're going to do is the header. The header is the top inch of the page here. And if you're using a full version of Microsoft Word, it's, it's as simple as just double clicking in the top inch. So double click and you're in. It also automatically takes you to the sub tab here called the header and footer. We actually started here under home. But just by double clicking up here, it brought us to the header and footer section. So what we need to do here is type the words running head colon. The R in running is capitalized. The H in head is not. Actually, I think in my sample essay, I capitalize H. So I even have a tiny error on my essay. So the words running head. And then you type in all caps the title of your paper. So uh English paper title goes here. Okay, that's not the actual title. That would be a lousy title for a paper, but that just means that this is where the title would go. Christopher says the mobile version for the iPad looks different. Yeah, so if you're using like a tablet, you're going to have to find these functions. You should have the functions available. Okay, so you might have to actually go to, for example, insert. Uh, I thought it was under insert. Maybe it's under format. Format, no. Uh, view. Yeah, view and then header footer, okay? So you should have, even the iPad version, you should be able to get to all these tools, but yeah, it might not be as simple as double clicking, or maybe it is, okay? So anyway, running head, colon, all caps, the title of your paper. So where's my Jeep paper? Do I have a quick link to it? Yes. So, okay, actually I fixed it. So that looks right now. Running head, the title of my paper was Animal Logic. Okay, because the ad has animal imagery. Um, so this is what we're aiming for. Now, here's something that's incredibly frustrating, <laughs> and it happens every month, and I don't know how to fix it. If you're following along with me right now, I highly recommend taking this and copying it. Okay, So I just hit Control-C on my Mac to copy this, because here's what happens. We have to also insert page numbers, and what we're aiming for is also the header is going to look slightly different on this page than it will on all remaining pages. Okay, so we have to click this little guy here called different first page, meaning that the header is going to look different on the first page than the rest of the document. Every time I do this, it makes this disappear. Watch. Boom. <laughs> Where did it go? So I'll just paste it back in again. Um, we also have to insert page numbers. And every time I do this, it wreaks havoc. So you have to do things maybe a couple different times. And because of that, it's a good idea just to have this all copied so you don't have to type it in again. So you can go to page numbers either here or if you're using some other program or you're using a tablet, you might have to go to insert page numbers. And yes, we want it to show up on the first page. And yes, we want it in the top right corner. So we click OK. And no page number appears. But watch what happens. Look, the little box here for different per first page is unchecked again. As soon as I check it, the page number should appear. Okay, so yeah, with a little bit of finagling, <laughs> you should get it to look like this. Um, here, here's another annoying thing. The entire document, okay, from top to bottom, so the cover page through the essay itself, all the way through the references at the very end, it needs to be in Times New Roman, 12-point font. Annoyingly, 
they don't automatically, whatever changes you make to have set for the entire document doesn't apply to the header. So we're also going to highlight this and make sure it's in the right font. So I'm going to go back to the home tab. Um, you can also get here with, I think, tools, no, format font, okay? But on the home tab, it's just a matter of changing the font, okay? So times new Roman 12, boom. Okay, so it looks like that. We've got our header. So I just click somewhere outside the header. And now we're going to continue with the cover page. Okay, so in the center of the cover page, so centered both vertically and horizontally, and you just eyeball it. Okay, so using the center tool, we're going to type three things. First, the title of your paper not in all caps, though you will follow the usual rules of capitalizing important words. So if the word of appeared, you wouldn't capitalize that or and, okay? but not in all caps. Um, we're also going to set up two other things. You might even notice it, okay? This is not in the same font because we put this in the correct font, but we have to put the rest of the paper. And as soon as we make these changes, it will apply to whatever else we type. So this also needs to be Times New Roman. And the entire document from here on out has to be double spaced. Okay, so we're going to do that as well. So this little tool here will change it from 1.0 to 2.0. And we're good to go. Again, you can do these things through the menu as well. So format, uh, paragraph, I think. Okay. So our title. Second, you're going to type your name. Okay, so that might be confusing because it might make you think that you have to put the professor's name there. So I'll just put uh, Joseph Peterson. Okay, right? So student's name. Now on the Jeep essay, I have a little joke here. Jane, a student, right? A student named Jane. <laughs> you don't have to put your middle initial. Um, and finally, the school you attend. So Full Sail University. And like I said, you just eyeball it. So I'll make this a lot smaller. I can already tell that should be bumped down a little bit. Maybe one more. Does that look? Or like that. Or like that. Who cares, right? Just eyeball it. Make sure it's in the middle to your two eyes. Now, as soon as you got this set up, you're done. The cover page is set. I have the cursor after the last word here. And now you just keep, hit, keep hitting enter until you get to the very first line of a new page. As soon as you get to that first new line, you stop. So almost there, almost there. One more probably. Boom, stop. Okay, so we're on page two. Now, for the third time, <laughs> we type our title. Not in all caps, okay? And we're pretty much set to go, except look what's happened. Remember when I said the header is going to look different on this page than remaining pages? Why? Because this is what we're aiming for. Here, running head, title of paper. All remaining pages, the words running head disappears. Because running head is like an announcement. It's telling people that this is going to be the header that appears in all pages. So we don't need the words running head appearing on all pages. But we do need page numbers to appear on every page. So this is why I say it's a little bit frustrating. And if you can't get rid of the words running head, I'm not going to penalize you for it. But I am going to, uh, Christopher says, what if a new page never appears? It should. If you keep hitting enter, you should get to a second page. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's different on your tablet version. Um, you'll have to. OK, it was a lag issue. Um, so we're going to go in and fix this. So we go into the header, we just erase the word running head. We are going to reinsert those page numbers. <laughs> Again, it's a little bit annoying because you end up doing things several times. So insert page numbers and look what happens. Yeah, we have to redo things again. So yes, we want the number to appear on the first page. Yes, we want it in the top right corner. Okay. And I think finally we've got it. Okay, so no running head here. Page number appears here. <laughs> the words running head have disappeared, but watch, they'll come back. Go in, click that different first page tab again. Now everything should stick. Running head, our full title in caps, page one. All remaining pages, 
just the title, No Running Ahead, page two. So if you need to rewatch any of these things, again, it's just a trick of going in and redoing things over again, going back to that insert page numbers, going back to that different first page. You can eventually get it to look like this. Okay, so I'm going to put the cursor right after our title. Right, so the title is all the way on the very first tippy top line of the new page. Now we're already set up to be double spaced. So I'm gonna hit enter just once, not twice, not three times. And I'm going to, we don't need the center tool anymore. So I'm gonna click a line left. So we're on the left side of the page and we can start typing our paragraphs. Now the first line of a new paragraph needs to be indented. So you hit the tab key and you can start typing your paper here. Now, I'm going to copy this because I want to fill up a bunch of space. By the way, when you reach the end of a sentence, like period, you hit your space bar twice. One, two, keep typing. One, two, keep typing. And by the way, I know all of you probably know this, but when you set up double spacing, yeah, the text just automatically wraps to a new line. Nearly all of you know this, but I do have one or two students every month where it's single spaced and they're kind of treating the computer like a typewriter. I'm old enough to remember typewriters <clears throat> where when you reach, when you get near the end of the page, you manually hit return twice and then keep typing. But <clears throat> if you don't have things set up to double spacing, the computer doesn't know that it's truly double spaced and it does funky things like it forces the first letter of every line to be capitalized because it thinks you're starting a brand new paragraph. So yeah, get double spacing set up from the get-go and text will automatically wrap around. Now I'm gonna grab all of this because I wanna fill up lots of space. Okay, because I'm gonna pretend that we've written several paragraphs. Okay, that looks like the length of an introduction. So let me grab all of this now and fill up a whole bunch of space. When you get to the end of a paragraph, okay, you hit enter just once. Not twice, not three times. Hit tab to indent and keep going. Because here's what students do sometimes. They think, oh, I'm going to put some extra space here. I'm going to put some extra space here because they think everything looks smashed together. No, don't do that. Okay. You only need to hit enter once between the title and the first paragraph or between paragraphs. And even though this looks like gibberish because it's repeating the same thing over and over again like that like Jack Nicholson in The Shining. <laughs> all play and what was it like? All work and no play makes Jack a bad boy or something. Um, like here's an actual paper, right? And to me, this doesn't look smashed together. To me, this looks clean and professional. That's the attraction of APA, by the way. It's clean, it's simple, it's efficient. One single font for the entire document, Times New Roman. Um, and by the way, open up a novel sometime like the Twilight books or whatever you like to read, you don't see extra space between paragraphs. Okay, So yeah, this is how your paper should look. So if you've been following so far, you've got your paper in the correct format. Okay, You just need to replace this gibberish with your actual writing. Now I'm going to fill up a whole bunch of space because I'm going to pretend that we've gotten to the end of the paper. So, okay, so enter tab. And let's say that on page, yeah, this page, we're at the end of the paper, okay? Wherever your paper ends, here it's actually come near the bottom. If your paper ends here, same thing. Keep hitting enter until you get to the first line of a brand new page. So one more, stop. Hit, use the center tool and type the word references. Now, that's it, no colon. No bolding or underlining. Again, that's the beauty of APA, is that it's very, very clean and simple. Okay, so don't do any flourishes like, oh, this would look better if I do this. No, just the simple, elegant word references. Not works cited, not sources, not bibliography, just references. Now, the same thing, we hit enter once, just once, and we can start creating our references. But before we get to that, we're going to actually go, we're going to return to the references. And now we're going to switch to in-text citations. Okay, if you've been following so far, this is all you need to do to get your paper in the proper format. Like this looks perfect. Wait, what happened to our cover page? <laughs> okay, I got my own lag issue. 
was like, where did the cover page go? So we have a perfectly looking cover page and all the rest of the stuff looks good too. And by the way, uh, APA is the style system used in all full sale classes. So if you get these fundamentals down, you'll have zero problems in your future classes. And your professors will be impressed if you can, because it is frustrating because APA, you should know in theory after this class. Um, so yeah, please try to carry this over to your other courses. Okay, so let's talk about in-text citations. So in-text citations occur when you are either quoting directly or not quoting directly, but you're, you're saying things in your own words, but the information comes clearly from a source, right? Either way, you have to cite, you have to give credit. So I'm going to show the two ways to do this. And the, one of the reasons why I'm not crazy about this slimmed down version of the outline that our department created is because I'm not sure if students completely understood why that outline template was asking for a signal phrase citation and then a parenthetical citation, right? Uh, here, let me quickly open up another document, right? I was asking you to do things like this, Smith, 2012 uh, or or according to Smith 2012 <laughs> it's it's trying to prepare you for the two different ways you can go about citing things now one of the issues I have is a I'm not sure students completely understood why they were being asked to do these two forms and second they're both incomplete because for direct quotes you need more than an author's last name and year and it, it is frustrating when students think oh that's just all I need for citation last name and year. No, if you're quoting directly, you might also need a page number, like page 42, or a paragraph number, like paragraph 5. Okay, It's when you are paraphrasing, you're not quoting directly. You're saying things in your own words, but what you're saying comes from research that you can, yes, just have Smith 2012. So I'm going to show this in real time. So remember the article I found last week? So let me go. Here's Full Sail Connect. So I'll scroll down to Library and then scroll down to Research Databases and EBSCOhost. I'll start at because I want to find that same article I found last week. So select all. And I found it by putting Call of Duty and Gimme Shelter. And it resulted in this article from Ann Donahue called Gimme Sales. And remember last week I said that at first glance, this doesn't really look like a great source because it isn't answering the question why this song is appropriate for this ad. But I said it could act as like a secondary source because it does sort of show that they wanted this song, right? Remember I talked about this last week. Oh, Christopher's asking, where were the indentations? So, okay. So if you need to begin a new paragraph, hit enter. And it's a tab key, okay? So it should be on the left side of your keyboard if you have a traditional keyboard, but it's tab and it just automatically indents and then you can start typing, okay? Stephanie says, how would you cite something that your reference cited already? Or would I have to find the original source to cite it? Ooh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I'm gonna come back to that, okay? Because yeah, that's kind of a unique thing. Ideally, if you can get to the original, that would be awesome because it makes things so much simpler. Um, to be honest, I don't remember the rule off the top of my head. You would actually literally have to Google APA how to cite quotation within an article. Okay, how to quote within an article. Um, I'm trying to think if any of these are really good. Well, let's begin here. Let's see what Central Michigan University has to say. Um, yeah, like it, it, it will end up looking like this, something like this. So the person who spoke that quote, in this case, this person's last name year, as cited in <laughs> Chan 2002. So that would be the article that you found that quotation, then a page and paragraph number for a direct quote. Um, so yeah, that'd be my advice to Google. Because even I, listen, APA, the official APA manual is a book that's like three or 400 pages. And I have to either Google or get my full APA manual to get these questions. Okay, where was I? Where's my document? 
Okay, so let's imagine that this is a paragraph where I'm talking about the Call of Duty ads use some music. Now, when should you quote directly and when should you paraphrase? Because there are times where students will read this whole paragraph and think, oh, wow, this sounds better than I could have ever put things. And so they take the whole thing and just drop it into their paper. No, don't do that. For one, if your quotation is longer than 40 words, it has to be put in a completely different format called block format. Block format is not difficult, but you, you shouldn't be using quotations that long. You're trying to find short quotations that can support your ideas. And by the way, sometimes you don't even have to take a full sentence. You can just take a portion. For example, let's look at the Jeep essay, which is buried somewhere in these three documents I have open. Okay, so here's my Jeep paper. Here's a full sentence of my own where I use two quotations. But look what, I'm not taking a full sentence or an entire paragraph. Here I just take four words, okay? In design, muted earth tones are, quote, usually reserved for backgrounds, end quote. And then I tell where the quote comes from. Chapman, 2010, paragraph one. The sentence continues. And while these colors may indeed be largely relegated to backdrop, quote, neutrals and browns are the epitome of nature. Cousins, 2012, paragraph one. Okay, so this full sentence that I've written, I find a way to naturally incorporate a quotation here and a quotation here. Okay, so you can do that. You can take just the half dozen words that are most relevant. Because the problem that occurs when I see students take a huge chunk, like all this, is either it's it ends up speaking entirely for them, which is not the goal. I want to hear your writing, not someone else's. Or sometimes the quotation is so specific and so dense that like it makes no sense. <laughs> a general reader has no idea what to do with it. Um, so be careful. Okay. Now, I will tell you that paraphrasing is probably your best choice here. Because look at what the information is saying, right? It's saying that this guy, the vice president of music affairs, flew to New York to get permission to use Gimme Shelter and even let the band members of the Rolling Stones see an early edit of the ad to get their approval as well. So quoting all this is just having, yeah, it's you just kind of taking the easy way out. I'm not saying that's your intention, but that's what ultimately you're doing. Um, so yeah, paraphrasing would work well here. Okay, so you find a way to, in your own words, by the way, your own words means you can't just change an occasional word. Like according to Vice President of Music Fairs, Tim Riley, by the way, there's really no other way to say that. So that wouldn't be plagiarism. Uh, but scoring, so you change scoring to obtaining. Obtaining Give Me a Shelter for the Ad was no small accomplishment. Yeah, changing a casual word is not paraphrasing. So let me try to attempt an, a paraphrase in real time. So for example, I might say, and by the way, I'm going to show the two different formats. So this is what makes APA slightly confusing. It's sort of like choose your own adventure. You have to decide, am I going to quote or am I going to paraphrase? And then second, you have to decide, am I going to mention the author's name in my sentence or not? So let me show. According to Anne Donahue. Now, if you mention the author's name in your sentence, you immediately have to put the year in parentheses. What year is her piece? I think it's 2010. Yes, 2010. Okay. So, according to Anne Donahue, boom, 2010 in parentheses. It has to appear. Uh, I could put more information if I want of Billboard. Mm, Matt, if I can, if I told you how much I hate the new Mac keyboard, <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I have. Okay, I won't say. Well, I will say it again. They are so shallow. These keys, I just can't get any sort of like texture or grip. Uh, okay, so according to Andani, 2010 of Billboard magazine, um, the Vice President of, of Music Affairs for Activision, Tim Riley, flew to New York to get permission to use Gimme Shelter. 
even showing the rolling stones a preview of the ad to get there okay right so i'm saying things in my own words i'm done okay let me highlight it so you can see it more clearly because i'm not quoting directly all you need is an author and a year now you don't have to mention the author in your own sentence you could say for example according to an article in billboard magazine the vice president of blah 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 if you do this then you save everything for the end donahue last name author's last name comma year of publication 2010 okay so yeah you you always have an option to either split things up so you mention the author's name here or just save it for the end does that make sense and by the way if you look at the jeep essay or the diet coke essays you'll see examples of both ways of doing things so for here i don't mention the author's name in the sentence okay now when should you mention the author's name in your sentence or just save it for the end you'll have to make that call right sometimes you can just feel like to say and on you of billboard magazine that feels like it has weight because most people have heard of billboard magazine here chapman who wrote this for a website okay nobody knows who chapman is so it's probably not that important to give him to mention him in your sentence or the name of his website just find your own natural way to get that information and then credit him at the end jose says what about if i want to use the same words as the writer used yeah we're going to get to that next okay direct quotes uh, but what I'm saying is that if you look at the Jeep ad, here's another direct quote. And here, yeah, here is a paraphrase, okay? So J.M. Fenster, that's the author, and because his name appears in the sentence, I immediately have to put a year in parentheses. So J.M. Fenster, 1991, writes that the Jeep, a wartime American creation, was valued by soldiers for its versatility. That's my wording, okay? That's me summarizing what the article says. Because I'm not quoting directly, I'm done. But look in the very next sentence. Norm Norville, so I'm, I mentioned his name, so I immediately have to put a year. In his article, The Story of the Jeep, Then to Now, also emphasizes utility, stating, quote, then I deliver my quote. Okay. So here, back to back, you see the difference between paraphrase and what it requires, just an author in a year, and direct quote, author, year, page, or paragraph number. So let me go back to this document, or excuse me, <laughs> this document, and answer Jose's question. What if we want to quote directly? Now, I already said that in this case, I think it's best to paraphrase. But, okay, if I have to quote something, I'm going to quote this. Okay. And by the way, I can do that, right? I'm not taking the whole sentence. I'm just taking this section of the sentence. For the first time in America, uh, Activision history, it allowed another company to make edits, blah, blah, blah. So let me do the same thing. Okay, so let me get rid of this. Actually, let me get rid of all this and start from scratch. So same thing. If you're going to quote a writer's exact words, same deal. You can mention the author's name in your sentence if you want. But if you do, the second his or her name appears, you have to put the year in parentheses of board magazine actually i should have kept that text since i'm right typing it out again <laughs> of billboard magazine <clears throat> uh vice oops vice president of music affairs tim riley flew to new york to obtain permission to use Give me shelter in the ad. Now I'll put in a direct quote, okay? Quote. Oh, that screwed everything up. Okay, let me fix this real quickly. So that needs to be double spaced. And it looks like the font changed. So let me fix that as well. Okay. 
good. So, and let me get it all highlighted so you can see. It looks like it changed the, it doesn't look, yeah, it looks like it's a weird gray. Let me make sure that's uh, black. There, good. Okay, now let me highlight everything so you can see it clearly. So, you see what I did here? So, according to Anne Donahue, 2010 of Billboard Magazine, Vice President of Music Affairs, Tim Riley, flew to New York to obtain permission to use Gimme Shelter in the ad. And, quote, for the first time in Activision history, it allowed another company to make edits to the ad itself in order to obtain approval from the band members as well. End quote. Okay. Now, we just need a page or paragraph number. Now, this is a one-page document, right? So we have no page numbers. This is why I say page or paragraph number. Uh, typically, a traditional source that you find through the Full Sail Library database, it's a PDF document. So you're getting the exact kind of like photocopied images of the pages from a journal or a magazine. Yeah, those will have page numbers. But like uh, web articles or this article here, that's a one-page version, we just count the paragraphs. So one, two, three, four, five. It's in paragraph five. And so we use the abbreviation P-A-R-A, -A, all lowercase, period, five. Now notice, the period doesn't go here at the end of the quote. It goes after the citation. Because if you put the period here, then technically the next sentence is beginning really bizarrely. Paragraph 5, you can... <laughs> okay, so um, probably one of the most frequent errors I see. The end of the sentence is here, not here. Okay, um, so does this make sense? So... We've mentioned the author's name in our sentence. We immediately put the year in parentheses, and then we, at the end, indicate what page or paragraph it appears in. Now, we don't have to, again, we don't have to mention the author's name. We could say, according to an article in Billboard magazine, blah, blah, blah. And if we do that, we save everything for the end. Donahue, 2010, paragraph five. Does this make sense? Because this is, a, I think, the part of the confusion is that you always have two options. And if you look at the cheap essay, you see all the different options. So here's a paraphrase. Here's a direct quote that's split up. Author mentioned in the sentence, page or paragraph number put at the end. Here's an example of author not being named in the sentence. So everything gets mentioned at the end. Author's last name, year, page or paragraph number. It's sort of like, yeah, checklist. Am I quoting or am I paraphrasing? And then second, am I going to mention the author's name in my sentence or am I not? Um, and again, you always have examples to look at. Okay, so that's in-text citations. Now we have to talk about references. Okay, so here's the Jeep essay. I have six references. You only need three. I went a little bit crazy. I have six. Um, they get arranged alphabetically. Oh, before I move on, I guess I should say, I think I mentioned this quickly last week, but what do you do if there's no author? Use the first two to three words of the article or source title. So it's gimme sales. Uh, comma goes inside the quotation marks. So gimme sales 2010 paragraph five. If it's a long title, like imagine an article titled The Road Ahead, The Road Behind. You could either just put the road or the road ahead. Okay, so first two to three words of the article title in quotation marks. What if there's no date? Use the abbreviation ND with periods. Stands for no date. Okay. So now we're going to go to references. So because I put in a quotation, it actually made the paper longer. So we're going to bump this all the way to the very first line of a new page. Mm -hmm. Stop. Okay, so I'm going to put the cursor after the word references. I'm going to hit enter just once. Just once. Same rules apply. And we can start creating our references, which are going to be on the left side of the page. Now, here's an important thing. If we look at the paragraphs, you can see we indent the first line of a new paragraph, but not the other lines. The references page, it's exactly the opposite. You do not indent the first line of a single reference entry, but you do indent the rest. So look at the Jeep essay, right? First line, not indented. All other lines, they are. So 
I have, let's start with this one. Here's the good news. If you use the Full Sail Library database, you can use the citation tool. I think I mentioned this last week, right? So you click cite and it will come up with MLA APA Chicago. And yes, you can take the APA reference, but you have to fix all the mistakes that it makes. So, but I'll, I'll grab it. Okay. So where's my sample paper? Here we go. So, oops, paste it in. Now, this little clipboard sometimes appears. If I just click match destination formatting, it will automatically double space and put it in Times New Roman. Authors names should not be in all caps. Okay, so I have to fix that. Also, and if you can remember this rule, you'll really impress me. Article titles only on the references page. This is another unique function of APA that's a little bit confusing. Only on the references page, your article title, you capitalize just as you would a regular sentence. So the G in gimme gets capitalized because it's the first word of our quote unquote sentence, but not the S in sales. And if we look at the Jeep essay, that's what's going on here. Okay. So for example, this is the title. So the C in colors gets capitalized because that's kind of like the first word of the sentence, but not an MLA you do this. Right? Not in APA. So all lowercase. Now, if you have a colon, yeah, you do capitalize the first letter after the colon. Uh, cause it's kind of like a subtitle. Uh, but that's what you see here. Okay? If you're wondering why is this all lowercase, uh, same thing here. Here, because it's not Jeep the brand. It's just Jeep the type of vehicle. The J and Jeep is lowercase. Same thing here. Story of Jeep then to now. The T and then is capitalized because it comes after the colon. It's like a secondary title. But all other, uh, here's a good example. Here it is Jeep the brand. So the J and Jeep is capitalized. But everything else, lowercase. Now, if the word like uh, Monday were to appear, yeah, you would capitalize it. Because, again, the rule is you would capitalize just as you would a regular sentence. Or if someone names, uh, someone's name appears like Madonna. Okay. Um, if you can remember that rule, you'll impress me because hardly anybody remembers this. That your article title, and it's not just the article title, uh, the video title. So if you use that video, pathos, ethos, and logos in advertising, or if it's the title of a book, same thing. You capitalize as you would a regular sentence. And that's what I'm doing here. Um, now, remember, this line does not get indented, but this line does. So I'm going to put my cursor in front of that guy. And I'm going to go to my ruler and just grab the bottom part of this hourglass and drag it half an inch. Now, it's going to apply this automatically to every other entry you create afterwards. So that's nice. So you don't have to do that step every time. And we can go. We can continue. Actually, I hate it when this happens. So I'm going to highlight it, right click, and remove the hyperlink. Okay. So you could do it before then. Do what before then, Christopher? <laughs> now I have an art. I did a search before the session began. I must have gotten rid of it when I searched for that. Okay, here we go. Uh, Call of Duty Black Ops. Give me shelter. The indentation before you paste. Not for the first one. You'll you'll have to get the. In there might be a way to do it, but I don't know how. Um, I'm doing it kind of old school by putting my cursor here and dragging. You're probably asking because you're using a tablet. Maybe you don't have that function. Um, yeah, you'll have to figure it out somehow. But once you get the first one started, the rest, and I'll show you right now, that it will automatically apply these rules to the next ones. Okay, so I did a search for Gimme Shelter, uh, Call of Duty Black Ops. And I'm just going to grab something, okay? So I have no idea what the quality of this is. Uh, here's an article also from Billboard. But we did not find this in the Full Sail Library database. We found it just online by Googling. Okay. But I'm going to show you in real time how simple it is to create a reference, even if you don't have a citation generator. And for some reason, this is not coming up. <laughs> I think I'm solidly online. Mm. Come on. There we go. Now, we have everything we need. Author's name, Anthony Bruno, a title, 
I'm actually going to go ahead and grab that title right now, copy it, and a date, November 19th, 2010. Uh, so, yeah. No, I don't want Siri. Um, his last name is Bruno, so it's going to come before Donahue. So, Bruno, last name, comma, first initial, Anthony, Anthony, period. Periods come after every element. And then, in parentheses, we put the date. Now, 2010, November 19th, I think it was. Now, why am I putting the full date? I'm not going to make a big deal if you can't remember this. Things that are published infrequently. Now, this is a bad example because you would think Billboard would be... <laughs> the same no matter what uh, but typically like journals things that are published once a month or once every couple of months you just put the year websites newspapers things that are published daily you try to put the fuller date like I said this isn't a great example because they're both from Billboard magazine so you would think that they should follow the same format um, yes references are alphabetical not according to you say order of use I'm not sure what order of use means but yeah you don't alphabetical so, right. So, C F N R T. If, well, I'll get to it in a second. If you don't have an author, uh, okay. Where's my? Here, let's get rid of this because we don't need this anymore. Actually, I might need it, so let me keep that open. Okay. So, date. Now the article title. Wow. I'll fix that by clicking match destination formatting. Uh, none of this should be bolded. So let me fix that. Okay, period. Now here's the thing. Okay, so the, here's the, the article title. Rolling Stones. That stays capitalized. Okay, not only because it's the first letter of the first word of our article, but also because it's the name of the band. Okay, Rolling Stones. But the teen team, no. The EU and up? No. Um, Call of Duty Black Ops. Now, here's the thing. Can you fix, like, imperfections in that article title? I would say yes. So make it look like that. Now, in this version, they put the name, the title in single quotes, which actually isn't grammatically correct, but that's fine because that's how it's represented. The V in video game? No. Lowercase. Okay. Um, now, we just put the words retrieve from... And here we can grab the URL. Oh, I didn't finish the previous. I'm probably confusing you guys. Hold on. I need to fix this. Okay. Uh, oh, this. see, they didn't have this before. Hold on. Let me check something. Yeah, it used to be that they would only give up to, okay, so if you grab something from the full sale library database, you actually don't have to have, if they give you this retrieve from and the full address, yeah, sure, use it. That's fine, because it will get me right to your article. Um, you don't have to, though. You could, if you, this is only for the database, okay? If you want to, if it gives you this, use it. Fine. That's perfectly fine with me. You can also put the name of the database. Okay, which you can find right uh, here, database business source complete. So if you use a citation tool in the full sale library, um, you can either just name the database, retrieve from business source complete, or if it gives you that thing like this, sure, use that. Either way, that's fine with me. But for things you find online, yeah, just grab the web address. Retrieve from web address, no colon, <laughs> okay, very simple. Just retrieve from thing. And we can keep adding to this, right? So I could just make something up. So Smith, James, uh, 2014. If it comes from like an online website, uh, put the full date. Okay, and you spell the, num the month completely, period. And then the title of the source goes here retrieve from okay so very very I think it's simple Let me remove that hyperlink it drives me crazy now here 
if you if you grab something from an uh, online database, you put the name of the publication. If you just find something from online, you can put the name of the publication if you want in italics, billboard. Okay, but you don't have to. Same thing here. If I got this from I don't know Forbes, I can say so. But the rule is, and actually, a student called me out on this one because I kept saying, "Why aren't you italicizing the name of the publication?" And he said, well, according to the APA rule book, if I, uh, a website doesn't require. On the Jeep one, I think I do. So, for example, here, uh, Smashing Magazine. That's actually just a website, but I count it as a publication name and put it, on, put it in italics. Same thing here. I italicized the publication, which I interpreted as the website. So, yeah, put the I, italicized the "Quote unquote publication that you found online or don't, uh, but if it comes from the Full Sail Library database, yeah. And this stuff here, this is issue, volume, page number. This is much easier if you can use the citation tool because it does it for you. It's not difficult to do, do, but it's nice when it does it for you. Um, I'll just say this comes from Academic Search Complete." the name of the database um, okay but what if you don't have an author's name okay well you just do the same thing except you don't have an author if you don't have an author the title of your article goes first okay so title of article date retrieve from and if there's no date Now, remember last week I showed projectapa.info. All this stuff is covered here. So if you need a quick refresher, go to the very first guy here, formats for quotations and paraphrases, and it reminds you of what we've covered, right? So if you mention the author's name, a year immediately goes in parentheses, then you deliver your quote, and at the end of the quote, you put a page or paragraph number. If you don't use the author's name, you find your own natural way to lead into the quotation and save everything for the end. And same thing for paraphrases when you say things in your own words okay. um, it also covers all the kind of extra special circumstances works by multiple authors works by unknown authors works with no date groups as authors okay uh, ditto for the references find your references so here for example uh, article from a website right so authors last name year date title of article retrieve from and it also covers like groups as authors like Amnesty International, no author. Again, we've already covered this, but if you need a refresher, projectapa.info is, is awesome because you can immediately go to citations or references and find your answer. Okay, because really APA, it's about just imitating. Just find the example of what you need. So if you found an, uh, an article with an author where the author seems to be Amnesty International, yeah, you, you've got an example here to imitate and do the exact same thing, right? And notice, like, here's the article title, right? In MLA, all this stuff, the A in antibiotic, the U in use, the A in alters would be capitalized, but not in APA. I've come to even like it. I, I sort of like how it looks, uh, the lowercase quality of it. Oh, by the way, and I'll, I'll end on this, okay? If you ever want to know, and this applies to the text of your essay, okay? Because references page is sort of a special situation. When do you use italics and when do you use quotation marks? So you italicize big things or whole things. What do I mean by that? Books, magazines, newspapers, uh, CDs, video games, uh, films etc. So on. You use quotes for small things or parts of holes. So not an entire book, but a short story. Not a book of poetry, but an individual poem. Not an entire newspaper or magazine, but an article or an essay. Not an entire CD, but a song. Okay. Not an entire television show. I didn't list that up above, but an episode of a television show. 
Okay, so a short story is part of a whole book, right? A song is part of a whole CD. So for example, this is for if you are mentioning a title in your essay, because again, on the references page, the rules are a little bit different. But for example, uh, my favorite Taylor Swift song is Shake It Up. No, Shake It Off. I had a brain freeze there. From her album, 1989. Okay, so song is a smaller thing, right? It's part of the bigger thing, a CD. So that gets put in quotation marks. But the name of her album, 1989, is italicized. If you can remember that trick, okay, smaller things or parts of bigger things go in quotation marks. The big things themselves get italicized. Or uh, my favorite Star Trek, the next generation episode is inner light okay you see how that works and notice this is what makes APA doubly frustrating those special capitalization rules I mentioned for the references page that we capitalize just as we would a regular sentence no that doesn't apply to if you're mentioning the title of a song in your essay then you would capitalize all major words Okay. Same thing with the title of the show. Okay, everything gets capitalized, or the title of the episode. Right, uh, a perfect day for banana fish is my favorite short story in the J. D. Salinger collection. Nine stories. Okay. By the way, it's a, I mean, listen, I won't really penalize if you don't remember the rules, but yeah, this is standard. Okay. Uh, so see if you can remember that whole things and parts of whole things. Um, okay. So I think we've covered what we need to, we've covered layout, we've covered insect citations, we've covered references, we've sort of covered exceptions. Um, so yeah, let's open things up to questions, comments, either about APA or anything about the class as a whole. If you are comfortable with what we've gone over, you are free to go enjoy the rest of your evening. And I thank you a lot for attending, but I'll hang out a little bit and answer questions. Uh, yeah, Christopher said that the project APA was dot info was really helpful because he had a dual author, or I guess you mean two authors, right? Like, um, and yeah, we'll show you how to do a citation. So I think for a citation, it would be the two authors' last names with the and symbol in between, right? So it would be like jo uh, Jones and where's my and symbol? Smith, 2012, right? Or if you're quoting directly, page 435. And on the references page, isn't it something like Jones, let's say his name is Frank, and Smith, let's say his name is Peter. Um, but of course, if I wasn't sure, I just go and look at the rules. Uh, references page. Right. So, okay. So here it gives an example. It's like here, there are three authors or no. Yeah. Three authors, right? And here's two authors. They actually don't highlight it as they just give examples. So yeah. Last name, first initial and symbol last name, first initial, or if they have like multiple initials, you put both of those initials. Okay, so questions, comments, anything, or are we good to go? Again, if we're good to go, you don't have to stick around. I know some people hang out because sometimes other people ask awesome questions, so you can certainly linger. I'm trying to think is if I've forgotten anything. Is that publication italicized in that reference? Is is what what publication and which reference? Ah, I had to think of 
nice uh, chug for my root beer. Is that publication? I tell us the very last example you showed me. Uh, what was the last example I showed you? The Jones and Smith stuff or the last? In this reference? On the APA site, the website? This article here, this is the publication name, Communication Research Trends. So that gets italicized. Okay, article from a database, you include the publication name, italicized. You also include volume, issue, page number information on the article. Um, but again, this is um, if you're getting an article from the database, which would be the Full Sail Library database, you should be able to click on the site tool and it should give you all of this. Okay. Or, yeah, you might have to fix parts of it because it loves to put author's names in all caps. Sometimes it loves to put uh, the article title in all caps. Or it doesn't follow the special capitalization rules. So, like the E in entertainment would be capitalized, the R in reality, like in MLA. But you need to fix all that stuff. That's why it's important to know the nitpicky rules of, NP of uh, APA because the, the citation tool is awesome because it generates all the content for you, but it makes mistakes. Stephanie says, I was not having any luck finding references for the no dialogue topic. I think I found something for it, but it's actually for my music topic. Right, so it sounds like you're writing about the Salvation Army ad. It's just, I don't remember what every student is writing about off the top of my head, but that's, yeah, okay, good. I was gonna say that almost only applies to Salvation Army ad. Okay, so instead of looking for no dialogue, right? Because the ad is almost like a silent film. It's all music and character and film cinematography, right? To kind of uh, make the ad more powerful. So you're, yeah, you're not going to find a uh, direct quote that talks about lack of dialogue in an ad. But what could you look for? Um, this is what I was talking about kind of last week when I was saying that you have to sort of think outside the box or, re or reverse engineer. So um, for you, it might be a good example to talk about, for example, emotion and advertising. Okay, you might actually have to be more general in, in that paragraph. So maybe there's something in the pathos, logos, and ethos and advertising video that you, find, you see a connection to. Remember I said if you use that video, oh, okay, so you said body language, good. Things like that. Um, or in that case, because that's a really hard topic, right? Because you're not really going to find direct information about lack of spoken words in advertising or a com television commercial. So that's an example where I think it would be perfectly fine to find a quotation that's about, as you say, body language or about um, creating sympathy through the use of children, okay? Things like that. Where, yeah, it's not 100% on topic but it's still relevant. As long as you are, I think, being genuine and finding something that truly adds to the paragraph, um, then I think you're, you're, you're fine. You're in good shape. Um, so yeah, you do have flexibility because it's certain topics you will find direct information about, like uh, the Call of Duty, the song used in that ad. There's articles written about that. Um, other times you'll have to be, yeah, a bit more creative um, but the rule of thumb is you should be finding something useful and relevant that would be helpful for, to you as a reader. Okay, so you're not just finding anything, something to throw in the essay just because you feel you need a quote. Um, so that's kind of my advice is just to be open minded and creative and find something that's relevant, even if it's not 100% on topic. Okay, that's a good question though. Other questions, comments? about APA. I think I, hopefully all this made sense. I know it got a little bit confusing with, uh, what was it? Yeah, like when to use the italicized publication name and when not. <laughs> the basic rule is if it comes from the library database, 
there will be a italicized publication name. If it comes from a general Google search, you don't have to put an italicized publication name in here. Okay, just author's last name, date, title of the article, then the retrieve from information. Very, very simple. And yeah, both the sample essays, by the way, can also be looked at for APA. So both the Diet Coke paper and the Jeep essay are, should be in pretty flawless APA. Okay, so they can also be used. And as uh, Mr. Schroeder, or Schrader, I'm not sure how that last name is pronounced, says projectapa.info is a lot more useful than you think. I wish more students would use it. I feature it every week, but um, again, it's a quick, pretty slimmed down reference for APA because it doesn't include everything possible that's found in the APA manual, just the stuff that students would most like, likely need. Okay, I will shut things down soon. I'll go ahead and stop the recording now. So to the people who are watching, thank you so much. I'm ending the recording now.